Ghostman Horror here. Today's story is called Earwig. Many years ago in Borneo, there was an Englishman called Clifford Macy, who was young, handsome, and very vain. He fancied himself as God, gift to women, and often boasted about his success. <coughs> Macy was part owner of a tobacco plantation. His friend and business partner was another Englishman by the name of Leopold Warwick. Despite being old and fat, Warwick had a wife who was very young and very beautiful. She was the envy of every man who set eyes on her. The three of them lived together in a big house on the, on the plantation. Macy slept in the first bedroom, while Rorick and his wife slept in the second. It was the rainy season. There was precious little to do. Macy's bored. He would find nothing that could keep him entertained. Time went on, he developed a passion for Rorick's wife and began to wish he could have her for himself. He tried flirting with her, but she wouldn't have anything to do with him. One evening while her husband was away, Macy made a pass at her, but she slapped his face. However, Macy was the kind of man who didn't take no for an answer. Every time she rebuffed him, he became more and more obsessed with her until she determined to have her at any cost. Although his heart was burning with white-hot passion, Macy had, de had a devilish and cunning mind. He soon came up with a way to get Warwick out of the, the imbonio. It was a type of earwig that lives in waxy secretions. It's a special liking for the human ear. It's so small and light. It could be calling it off. Who could be calling your face and you better even feel it. If it gives, it gets into a man's ear, it creeps down the canal until unable to turn around, feeding as it goes and causing weeks of hellish torment. Until, well, I'm sure you can use your imagination. Macy paid two natives men a large sum of money, instructed them to creep into Warwick's bedroom in the middle of the night and place an earwig on his pillow. He went to sleep that night with a smile on his face and dreamed of about the horrible t fate that was about to befall his friend. The next morning when Macy came down to breakfast, Warwick seemed bright and cheerful. He watched the old man closely, looking for any signs of discomfort. Just then Macy felt a strange tickling sensation in his own ear. He poked his finger into his ear. He discovered he was bleeding, jumping from his table. With a look of horror in his face, he shrieked, the damn thing's in my ear. It appeared that the men he paid made a terrible mistake. During the night, they had gotten into the wrong room and placed the earwig in the wrong man's ear. That was the beginning of weeks of unmanageable pain and agony, and nothing the doctor could could do for him. He lay in his room, tied to the bed with his wrist lashed to his headboard to prevent him tearing his ears off. Day and night he withered and screamed as the earwig crept and crawled and twisted through his head, slowly driving him insane. Occasionally when the earwig was resting, Macy could get a break from his torment, but when he woke up he would scream and scream and scream. The pain was so unbearable that being flayed alive, buried at stake, put on a rack, or even hanged by the neck, would have been an act of mercy. Every time the doctor came to see him, mercy begged him to put him out of his misery. Then something very unexpected happened. By accuracy, the earwig called out of the other ear. Macy got, had come close to the brink of death, but he had survived the torment. When he was well enough to talk, the doctor came to see him. I suppose you're going to call the police. Have me arrested now, said Macy. No, said the doctor. They're not calling the police. Why not? Macy demanded. I suppose they're trying to avoid a scandal. No, they're taking pity on you. They know about your condition. What do you mean? You see, the earwig was a female, said the doctor. He had laid eggs.
Ha, 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 ha.